Previously on Great Chocolate Showdown, the tension rises. Seven home bakers tried to perfect pat de fui. It just got even tougher. So sticky. And Emma won her first technique test with her perfect pug. He was best in show. <laughs> In the elimination challenge, my heart is beating like a thousand miles a minute. Mike reaps the fruit of his labor. This is gorgeous. Winning him best dessert. I feel so good right now. Leaving Charlie and Allie facing elimination. This is my first bad bake. In the end, Charlie's mango entremet sent him home. Spakers remain. Let's go. As they compete for the coveted Great Chocolate Showdown title. This is not good. Just start again. We are the last six bakers. I cannot believe I even made it this far, and I am so excited. Hello, bakers. Hi. Hi. Each of you has made incredible strides on your path to becoming better bakers. But we're here to sweeten your skills. It's time for your next technique test. Bakers, in today's technique test, I'm going to show you how to make a staple in the dessert world, the meringue. Oh, OK. There are many delectable ways to marry chocolate and meringue. I'm going to show you Italian meringue because it's the most stable. Here's a tip for you, bakers. Room temperature egg whites whip up much better than cold ones. I'm adding some cream of tartar, which will help stabilize the meringue and gives it a flexible, bouncy texture. Now I'm going to start whipping my egg whites at a lower speed. Whipping at a lower speed helps for air bubbles, which will make the meringue more stable. I want to get my egg whites to soft peak before I add my sugar syrup, which I need to get to a temperature of 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's up to temperature, I have to slowly pour it in my sugar syrup. So now I'm going to show you how to add color to your meringue. I'm using liquid food gel color because it's highly concentrated. Chef Cynthia looks so elegant while she shows us how to make meringues. But there is no way that I'm going to look like Chef Cynthia. I'm going to look a hot mess, most likely. And now comes the best part, piping it. Gross. Next, a two-tone star drop. Now, this may look like a plain white meringue, but looks can be deceiving because I've painted the inside of the piping tip with food coloring. And this is going to create a striped effect. Now you can pipe meringue directly onto your parchment paper, or you can also pipe it onto skewers, which will give height to your dessert. I'm piping onto the dull end of my skewer so that the pointy end can be inserted easily into a cake or showpiece. Now that my meringue is piped, I'm ready to bake it. And I bake my meringues at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Familiar with is lemon meringue pie that my mom used to make. So I hope this is something that I can do. My meringues are out of the oven and cooled. Now it's time to decorate. I've painted my cone form with white chocolate and I have some tempered chocolate here to attach my meringue to my structure. Once I've added all my meringues, I'll have something that looks like this. Wow, wow. it's beautiful. For your next technique test, you must create a themed meringue tower and six mini desserts featuring meringue and chocolate. Oh, <laughs> this is a oh, cool new man. mini Christmas tree. The piping possibilities and color choices are endless. So we want to see a multicolored and multi-textured masterpiece. We expect amazing meringue towers. So we're giving you a little extra baking power. You're working in pairs. <laughs> <laughs> in order to find out who you'll be working with, please choose the chocolate bar. Emma, you're up first. Purple. Teal. Purple. <laughs> I am so happy that me and Emma are a pair, because she decorates amazing, and I have the flavors. So this would be a great duo. Kristen, you're next. I have pink. Mike. I chose teal. teal. This is great. Tim and I are going to make a really strong team. That means, Allie, you'll be working with Kristen. Hey, girl. Allie's precision and my creative skills, that's going to make a great team. Baker's sweet safety is in the table. From this point on, all of you will bake in the chocolate elimination challenge. And the winning team of this technique test will receive a special advantage in the next elimination challenge. Mm -hmm. 
The pantry is fully stocked with the finest chocolate and ingredients. And you'll have two hours and 45 minutes to complete this test. Ready? Steady? Get your sweet on! Okay. What should we call our theme? Pastel Princess Dream. Yeah. Okay. Ashley and I decided to do a pastel princess dream theme because we love the colors of pastel and they match our shirt. It's gonna be cool. <laughs> we got this. We got this. Our theme is the rainbow candy shop. It looks so pretty. Kristen and I decided to make a rainbow candy shop meringue tower because we love rainbow colors. We got this. We do got this. Okay, I say we make a peach themed like cone and then a peach themed dessert so it's really cohesive. Our theme is life's a peach because Tim currently lives in Atlanta and I used to live in Atlanta and Atlanta and the state of Georgia. Let's go. Let's go, we got this. Meringues are so fun and they pair so well with chocolate. And in terms of making a meringue that will hold its shape, volume and color, you need to be able to learn how to read the meringue in the mixer. And you can tell when it's whipped because it's glossy and shiny and holds a stiff peak. Fast and smart, fast and smart. So for this technique test, we're making six minute white chocolate peach dequa with a peach compote and a graham cracker and pecan crumble. But the first thing that we start on is our meringue. Boom, 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 boom. As I start my meringue, I start by separating my egg whites. And if you get any yolk inside of these egg whites, then it can throw off the consistency of your meringue and it may not set. How's it going over there? Good. I'm at 240, so. You're such a talented pourer. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> For our mini desserts, we're going to make a chai spice macaron with a Swiss meringue buttercream and a milk chocolate ganache. And we are good. My meringue mixture is at the right peaks that it needs to be. I'm feeling very good about this before. I'm just going to whip a little bit more, and then it'll be ready. How's it going, Ashley? You good? I'm good. OK. For our mini desserts, we're making pavlova filled with milk chocolate, pastry cream, and fresh fruits. Watch your eggs. You don't want to over whip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are both going at such a fast pace, and I'm really glad that we're on the same page. All right, I'm starting on another batch. Yeah, me too. Get those things whipped up. So silky. Now it's time to color the meringues, and I'm going to start off with pink, my favorite color. Is this pink on mine? Love it. Are you happy with your color over there? I All righty. One of the pitfalls our bakers can run into is in working in their color that they're overfolding. So with every fold, you are deflating that meringue a little bit. And then if you fold too much, when those meringues hit the heat of the oven, they'll start breaking down, and then they become too fragile and crumbly. We're doing good, we're doing good. Okay, I'm gonna start working on the uh, peach colors, yeah? Okay. I'm making sure that we have a variation of color for our peach-themed tower, from a deeper, darker, peachy red to almost a yellow tone. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, right? I like it a lot. The goal is piping out different shapes, colors. Oh, those are cool looking, man. Also, you have meringue in your beard right now. Uh, I, I thought it made <laughs> me look distinguished. Try not to be so messy, but I gotta speed it up. As I'm working on the larger moraines, Ellie is working on the smaller ones. Hey, Ellie, how's your piping going over there? Pretty good. I'm feeling really good about these meringues. They are looking wonderful and vibrant. It's going to be so good. Now, all the teams have their meringues in the oven, so our bakers really now need to start working on their desserts. Yeah. I am starting on the shells for our macarons. It's my first time actually popping. It's not to be too sloppy with them. I've never made macarons before, so I hope these come out right. Oh, that looks awesome. I'm going to go ahead and start on the peach compote. OK, I'm going to start tempering chocolate. Perfect. So now I'm moving on to tempering chocolate. This tempered chocolate is going to be the glue that's going to allow us to put our meringues onto this cone. How did the chocolate come off? It is taking its sweet time. All right, we got to get to hopefully decorating by a one hour mark. Yeah. This chocolate is taking forever to come to temper. Bakers, one hour left. <sighs> I'm frustrated because if I can't get this chocolate tempered enough time to put our tower together. Come on. Can't make this cool any faster.
can't make this cool any faster. I know I'm tempering the chocolate correctly, but I'm wondering if maybe I'm making a little bit too much, which is why it's taking so long. So I take some of the white chocolate out and put it into another bowl, and that chocolate I'll use to cover the cone. Okay, this is ready to paint the cone if you want to take it. Finally, after what feels like forever, our white chocolate is seeing temper. This tempered chocolate is gonna be the glue that's gonna allow us to put our meringues onto this cone. Honey. Yes, sir. We got this. For this technique test, we have to make six mini meringue desserts and a meringue tower. My vision for the top of our tower is to make a big pastel lollipop. Perfect for a princess. <laughs> I finished doing my meringues. My macarons are setting. Now it's time to coat the base of the tower. Looks really good, Kristen. Thanks. OK, I am ready to start putting stuff on. This tempered chocolate that took forever is working in piece to the tower itself. Looks like a traffic cone. 30 minutes. We got everything done. We just got to assemble. Yes. Just do it. Just get them on, make them look good. Life's a peach. Life's a peach. Bakers, 15 minutes left on the clock. All right, y'all, keep going. Uh, keep on hustling. At this point, I'm sticking them anywhere. Oh, because it looks so good. It's getting there. You got this. Come on, Bakers. Uh, uh, uh. <gasps> oh, my freaking gosh. 10, Nine, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, time's up! Did that girl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to the judges tasting this dessert. I know the flavors there, and I know they're going to be wowed by it. I mean, it don't look half bad, you know? It looks pretty good. Snaps for the Rainbow Candy Shop. Bakers, in teams of two, we asked you to create a themed meringue tower and six mini meringue-based desserts. Kristen, Allie. Allie and I created a rainbow candy shop thing meringue tower with a chai spice macaron and a Swiss meringue buttercream and a milk chocolate ganache. Well, this is a kaleidoscope of color and texture. You've done some fantastic piping work. Your meringues are well executed. But I wish you hadn't have gone for the luster spray. Because my favorite color scheme on this tower is this patch. Get to with the luster yeah. spray. Look at that vibrance. And then over here, where the bluish luster spray got to it, it mutes all the colors. Oh, they look perfect. Allie, Kristen, I love your macaron for the first time ever making it, get over here. <laughs> Chefs practice their whole life and they can't get it. Thank you. Your milk chocolate ganache melt in my mouth at that punch of chocolate. Your chai Swiss buttercream, it balanced so well with your chocolate ganache. Nice work. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of you too. I am so stoked. Go Allie, go Kristen. Mike, Tim, please bring us your meringue tower. Our meringue tower is named Life's a Peach. We made a white chocolate peach de croix. There is a peach compote and a graham cracker pecan crumble. Well, I really like that you did a lot of unique, different piping techniques, different color schemes, but your desserts, they look roughly assembled, and your meringue shells. A daquoise is a meringue that has ground nuts stirred into it and then baked, and then that is layered with your creams and your fillings. So did you stir any nuts into that meringue? No, we did not. Shall we give it a taste? Yes. Mike, Tim, I can certainly see the nod to peaches but I can see some of your swirls have started to collapse on each other, and that's just because some of the volume from your meringue was lost. Chocolate work. If you go to that much work to make a leaf like that, I want to see more. But when it comes down to the desserts, the flavor of the peaches with the graham and the pecans and the cinnamon, it just has that wonderful comfort food feel, but had it been presented as an elegant dessert, 
would have blown my mind. Thank you. Thank you. I'm most nervous about the judges' critique of the appearance, but they absolutely love the way the dessert tastes. So I hope that's going to make up for it. Emma and Ashley, you're up. Our theme of this meringue tower is pastel princess dream. And we made six peplovas with milk chocolate, pastry cream, and fresh fruit. Ashley and Emma, wow. This truly is a meringue tower fit for a princess. And of course, you were very smart and painted your cone along the same tones, which helps unify the look. I love that you added a tongs the whole thing together. Okay, shall we give these a try? Yeah, yes, no, please. Right. Your milk chocolate pastry cream was on point. It wasn't overly sweet, which was good because with the meringue being sweet, it would have been too intense, but your desserts are inconsistent, so you gotta make sure every single one is the same. I have to flag one concern of mine. Your dessert is prepared from the exact same meringue that you use to create the tower. Being a meringue and a pavlova is, a meringue is intended to be crispy all the way through. A pavlova should be crunchy on the outside, soft in the center. And two ingredients are added to the meringue, cornstarch and lemon juice. This is actually a meringue nest. Thank you. Thank you. Bakers. Congratulations. All of you delivered delightful and playful showpieces. But there was one team who created a meringue tower that was a vibrant, multi-textured masterpiece. Belongs to... Bakers, there was one team who created a meringue tower that was a multi-textured masterpiece. And that tower belongs to... Kristen and Allie. Your rainbow candy shop was a technicolor triumph. <laughs> and that macaron at the end of the rainbow was a tasty little treasure. A special advantage in the next challenge. Beggars, all of you have come a long way in the skills you've shown us. And you've also come a long way to be here in this kitchen. We know you must miss home, so we have a postcard from someone who misses you too. Oh, my daughter! It's from my mom. It's from my sister, my husband, and my three kids. Son, Clay. It's for my grandmother, and she says, Hi, Kristen. I'm sitting here thinking about you and how much I miss you. I love you so much and so proud of you. My daughter, Janaya, says, Congratulations, Mommy, on making it this far. Hang in there. You're making me so proud. Your hard work does not go unnoticed. Never give up. Words cannot express how proud I am of you. I know that Dad and Patrick are cheering you on from above. You are a rising star at something so important in being visible for Indigenous women. I love you so much and so proud of you. I know you can do it. Dear Daddy, we miss you and care for you. We are cheering for you to win $50,000. <laughs> I miss you so much, and I'm rooting you on. Your biggest cheerleader, love mom. Love, Shania. Love, grandmother. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I love you from Clay. Aww. He's an amazing kid. He's very unique. I don't even know the last time I cried. <laughs> we have a bunch of softies in here. <laughs> we hope your postcards provide a bit of comfort and some sweet motivation for your next bake. Desserts have the power to take us on amazing journeys, from a trip back home, to a faraway place we've only dreamed about. For your next chocolate elimination challenge, you are going on a flavorful adventure. <laughs> okay. We want you to create a plated chocolate dessert highlighting an ingredient from our international pantry. Okay. On your postcards, you will find a number that matches a number on the cupboard. Who's got number one? That'd be me. Tip. Blue corn. Kristen. I have wattle seed. Mike? 
I have adzuki beans. Number four. I got sumac. Number five. Black sesame paste. Last but not least, Ashley. I got tiger nuts. Kristen and Ali, as the winners of the technique test, you will each receive some judge advice once during your bake. Oh. Ring the bell and ask for one of us to help you with some expert tips for success. The pantry is fully stocked with the finest chocolate and ingredients, and you'll have two and a half hours to complete this challenge. The baker who presents us with our least favorite dessert will be going home. Ready, steady, get your chocolate on. Let's go. I think after receiving these postcards, everyone wants to put their best foot forward. Excuse me, friend. We're taking all with this challenge. We don't want to just see the ingredients sprinkled on top. We no. want to be able to taste those flavors. So they need to play with the ingredient and discover, does it need to be steeped into a liquid? Does it need to be heated? So they really have to step up their game. Tiger nuts originate from North Africa and not actually nuts, but small root vegetables with a sweet, nutty flavor similar to coconut. I already know a little bit about tiger nuts. My best friend's husband is from Africa, and he makes tiger nut pudding. So I'm making a tiger nut, and I'm going to substitute the almond for the tiger nut. I'm going to have a chocolate tiger nut base, a vanilla custard, and I'm going to have chocolate on the top. And I'm also making a tiger nut brittle. I put them in my food processor to blend them. Not working. How oh, aren't they chopping up? The tiger nuts are too hard. I have to boil these nuts so I can blend them up. Or I'm just not going to be able to give the judges anything. And I want to make my daughter, Janaya, so proud of me. I boil my tiger nuts, take them out, and I start to blend them. Finally. Azuki beans are commonly used in East Asian desserts flavor. I am making a matcha and azuki bean whipped cream roulade with a milk chocolate ganache, matcha crumble, some azuki bean jellies, and a dark chocolate sauce. I cannot use the azuki beans the way that they are. No one wants to bite into a whole bean. So I'm going to put them in the food processor and blend them down really finely. And then I'm going to add some sugar to the azuki bean paste and heat them together to bring out the azuki bean flavor while also adding a lot of sweetness. Mmm. That is much better with a lot of sugar in it. I know my dad and my husband are cheering me on from above, so I'm going to give it my best. Flavor with hints of coffee and hazelnut. I'm making a water seed pina cotta and a chocolate hazelnut shortbread with a chocolate water seed espresso sauce and a caramelized hazelnut crumble. First, I'm going to get started on my water seed pina cotta and I boiled my water seed with the cream and sugar so it can absorb the flavor. And I put it in the fridge to set. Boom, boom, boom. Next, I put my chocolate hazelnut water seed shortbread on a baking tray. Oh, yeah, this is fine. Okay. I'm making a milk chocolate black sesame mochi filled with black sesame milk chocolate ganache with black sesame sable and a strawberry gelé. The black sesame flavor is really nutty and rich, so the strawberries are going to bring a sweetness to it. I'm making mochi because mochi is traditionally a Japanese dessert and black sesame paste is also from Japan, so I think the two pair well together. I think many people are familiar with toasted sesame oil, but black sesame paste has an even more pronounced sesame flavor, which means a nuttiness, almost a smokiness. And I think the fact that Emma is using milk chocolate will pair well with the sesame. I'm doing donuts. Yum. I'm going to be making a blue corn chocolate donut, but I'm going to elevate it with a rose water and raspberry coulis, a cardamom diplomat cream, and a blue corn lace twill, and pistachio crumble. I'm going into this challenge after receiving this postcard more focused than ever. It made me start thinking about not just Clay, but my other two kids, my wife. I know they're all rooting for me. Now it's time to bake. Sumac is a spice that has a citrus-like quality and can also be used to add a pop of color to a dish. I am making a milk chocolate vertical sumac tart. That's not fancy. I am literally standing a tart up on its side. There's no backing to it at all. And there's going to be sumac milk chocolate ganache, a sumac caramel sauce, milk chocolate mousse, and a white chocolate temper garnish. And hopefully the judges love that. Kristen and I got this advantage, and it's a huge deal. If at any point we get stuck, we can ring the bell and get help. 
We'll see how this goes. And this is my shortbread. It smells delicious. So now I'm gonna check on my water sea panna cotta. Doesn't look like it's setting correctly. Oh my goodness. And it's like half set at the bottom, but not so much at the top. This is not good. Bakers, one hour left. Oh my goodness. I'm nervous that my panna cotta is not gonna be set in time. So I think I'm gonna use this bell for some advice. Chef Anna, I need your help. I'll be right there. Kristen, can we check my panna cotta? Yes, please. Oh, your gelatin is not dissolved in it. So what should I do? I think you're better off just start again. Starting over? Yeah. Bloom the gelatin, make sure it gets fully melted in that cream, mm -hmm. put it in a flatter dish, and then it'll chill faster. Okay. I'm running out of time, but when Chef Anna tells you to start something over, you do it. On to the next step. For this chocolate elimination challenge, we must have a plate of dessert that highlights an ingredient from the International Pantry. I'm gonna do the filling for my Nanaimo bar. I mix butter, powdered sugar, vanilla, and heavy cream. Pale, like yellow, I know that it's ready. Still needs to whip, because it needs to change in color. At the same time, I'm making my tiger nut brittle. Ooh, my glasses. Glasses keep fogging up. This is gonna be a great brittle. Ooh, it smells so good. My cake is cooling, so I am going to incorporate my azuki bean paste into a cream filling. I'm also going to make a jelly out of the bean because it should also enhance the azuki bean flavor. I'm also gonna make a milk chocolate ganache to go with it because the judges always like to see more chocolate. These are my strawberry gelée, and they look pretty good to me. And now it's time to make my mochi. <laughs> to make the mochi, I mix together glutinous rice flour, sugar, and water, and then put that in the microwave and heat it up. The texture of mochi is really sticky, and it kind of feels like modeling clay. I flatten out the mochi dough and roll it in cornstarch and make discs so that I can fill it with my black sesame ganache. I think that they will be a good texture. Now that my tarto is ready to go and my ganache is made, it's time to get started on my sumac caramel sauce. Sauce does not look right. Oh no, we crystallized. That's not good. At this point, I decide to ring my bell to get some input from Chef Steve. Because if I don't get this caramel sauce on my plate, I will only have one element of sumac, and that is not good. I'm really having problems with my caramel. OK, was your cream hot when you added it or cold? Room temp. Room temperature. Quick trick, first warm your cream and your sumac together. Bring it to a boil, strain it. Then when you get that golden amber color, you pour your cream into your sugar, slowly okay. whisking. Once that's done, take it off. Allow it to emulsify your butter. Okay, okay. thank Good you. Good luck. I attempt to make my caramel sauce again, and oh, this is still not working. My caramel keeps crystallizing, and crystallization in your caramel is a big no-no. So I'm just gonna stick with my original batch. We're pivoting. And even though it doesn't look like caramel sauce, it still tastes great. You have 30 minutes left. It's time for me to work on this blue corn twill. Oh, OK. I see it's starting to do its little thing thing. This is going to add a lustication to this plate. When you read the word, it looks like you're supposed to go twills and twirls. <laughs> OK. I'm going to attempt to roll my cake. Before I roll the roulade, I need to make sure I, of course, include the whipped cream that I've made that's got the azuki bean in it. And then I also have my milk chocolate ganache that needs to be spread as well. I'm nervous about rolling this roulade because the biggest danger when making a roulade is if the cake cracks. If it does, the ingredients you put on the inside are going to start seeping out and you're going to lose that beautiful swirl effect that you've worked so hard for. OK, I am happy with how that looks. Please look perfect, please look perfect, please look perfect. After I punch out the ganache, it's time to put it in the tart shell. And the tart shell breaks. Oh, it is so fragile. I only have two tart shells left. So I have to be really careful because I have no room for error. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Bakers, you have five minutes left. All right, last details. All right, guys, keep going. Got time, I got time, I got time. I'm going to get it out. So I run to the blast chiller to check on my water seed panna cotta. Panna cotta. Go, y'all, we got this. 
Looks so yummy. One minute left, Bakers. Let's go. Come on, Woo. Come on Bakers. Oh. Okay. Focus, focus, focus. Almost there. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Oh. Good job, everyone. Oh, I would eat that. <laughs> This is the best dessert I've played it yet. This daughter Janaya. Bakers, we asked you to create a plated chocolate dessert featuring an ingredient from our international pantry. Tim, please bring us your dessert. I made a blue corn chocolate donut with a rose water and raspberry coulis. I am astounded at the plate you presented us. It's so clean and neat. And you chose a donut, which of course I get the slight joke, given your profession as a policeman, but that is not like any donut you're going to find donut store. Let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim, I thought your donut texture was so dreamy. It had that airiness and lightness and was very chocolatey, but you could definitely taste the blue corn. I so very much wish that you would give me that recipe. <laughs> that balance between the rich chocolate and the perfume of the blue corn, it takes over your palate, but in a good way. But that postcard from your son, Clay, gave you just that drive you needed. Thank you, Judge. Kristen, please bring us your plate. I made a waddle seed panna cotta and a chocolate hazelnut shortbread. Kristen, you have really smartened up your plating style. Thank you. It is composed and it looks like your panna cotta set okay. Shall we give this a taste? Mm -hmm. Kristen, your dessert waddle seed featured so beautifully. It was definitely the star of that plate. Your shortbread tasted great. The only thing I did not like your panna cotta, it was too tart. It needed a little more sugar. But you have presented a cohesive, well-rounded, plated dessert. Thank goodness for this advantage and Chef Anna, because I would not have a dessert to present. Mike, please bring us your dessert. I present to you a matcha and a zumroulade with milk chocolate ganache, a zuki bean jellies, and a tempered chocolate garnish. This is a beautiful plate. Thank you. I'm feeling nervous. No matter how confident I've been in any of the desserts that I've given the judges, they have faces that are very hard to read when they're eating your dessert. Mike, Mikey, Michael. Oh, now I'm in trouble. Uh, uh... Mike, absolutely beautiful presentation. I love how you cut the roulade on a bias to give it height. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. I got the azuki bean flavor, but I got that more than the chocolate. I lost the chocolate in every aspect of the dessert. The milk chocolate was a little mild against that earthy intensity of adzuki. But what I am very proud of, Mike, is your plate presentation, your thought process, and the composition of what you've presented to us. Thank you so much. Ali, please bring it. I created a milk chocolate vertical sumac tart with a milk chocolate sumac ganache and a sumac caramel sauce. Allie, absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Allie, your tart shell, great crumb. It had a bite and a crunch and a flakiness to it. That being said, you missed it on the caramel. You didn't get that caramel there, and I couldn't taste the sumac in it. If you have a tart that size and literally half a teaspoon of caramel, you're not going to get that caramel in every bite. Yeah. And I wanted more sumac. 
The real selling feature of sumac is this sparkle of acidity. Yeah. So I really wanted more of that. I am a little disappointed, but I hope that my plating skills and presentation are enough to keep me here. Ashley, please bring us your dessert. I made a tiger nut, and I made a tiger nut brittle and a maple tiger nut crumble. What you've given us is a wonderfully beautiful plate. The elements on the plate make sense. And this is a big step up for you, Ashley. Yes. I want to congratulate you on that. Thank you. Time for a taste. Ashley, your Nanaimo bar, the custard layer and the chocolate layer were both beautiful. I did run into slight issues with the brittle. A plated dessert is meant, so you could have crumbled your brittle a little bit so that it can fit neatly on a fork. But the way you integrated the tiger nut into that Nanaimo bar base particularly gave it such texture and body and flavor at the same time, partnered with that intense chocolate, the ganache on top, it was sublime. Thank you. So obviously getting that postcard did something. It's lit a fire in you. I can see that. Yes. I believe strongly your daughter is nothing but proud of you. And we're so... Emma, please bring us your dessert. I made a milk chocolate black sesame mochi filled with black sesame milk chocolate ganache, as well as a black sesame chocolate sable. You are plating, I think it's original and creative, and the mochi, it's got that clarity to it, so you can see that dark, intense sesame filling hiding underneath. I can't wait to jump in. Emma, in giving us the flavor of your black sesame paste, I think it was there. More pronounced in the mochi than the sable, but the chocolate dominated the sable, so the two together in one bite were equally balanced. But eating your mochi bowl, the filling inside was a little bit too thick, so it was quite hard to break into, and it's normally meant to be very smooth. And your mochi itself, too glutinous. It was really elastic. So I think you need to refine your technique there. Thank you. I'm really getting worried that I might be going home today. Bakers, we asked for a plated chocolate dessert featuring an ingredient from our global pantry. Some of you took us on exciting voyages filled with irresistible flavors and innovative plates. But sadly, not everyone's dessert had the impact we we're hoping for. When I call your name, please step forward. Mike. Both of you are safe. <laughs> Tim and Ashley. Please step forward. The two of you had our favorite desserts of this challenge. But who had the best dessert? Congratulations, Ashley. <laughs> I'm so excited. My daughter would be so proud of me. Ashley, your Tiger Nut Nanaimo bar had ferocious flavor. We heard your roar of determination in this challenge. Keep it up. Thank you. <laughs> Emma and Ali, unfortunately, your desserts were not as successful. Ali, we have come to expect elegant plates from you which is exactly what you gave Vertical Tart. It was striking. However, in a dessert where sumac was meant to be showcased, it felt like an afterthought. Emma, we thought your plating was charming, and you definitely featured black sesame paste throughout your dessert. Sadly, we found your mochi chewy and your sable dry. Unfortunately, one of you must leave this kitchen. The baker who is going home is...
Alley. Alley, you are an incredibly talented baker with an artist's touch. You've shown us an impressive array of techniques, and we know your baking is going to become nothing short of exceptional. This whole experience has been so incredible, and I'm so excited to be able to share my message and my story to everyone out there. Indigenous people need to be seen and heard, and I help take a little step forward for my people, and I love that. Grateful for all of the knowledge I've gotten. It's only gonna help me become a better baker. This is just the beginning. Next time on Great Chocolate Showdown. Let's get ready to crumble! The final five bakers tackle dessert sandwiches. Delicious. From bread rolls to starring rolls. Come get your popcorn! The bakers are cast in a blockbuster elimination challenge. Let's do this. Drama unfolds in their most epic bake yet. Chocolate background player in your desserts again.
Yeah. <laughs> 